God be with you. Welcome. May God richly be praised because you are here this morning and online. Welcome. Find the attendance pad, please, and write your information. And pass it down the, uh, down the road. Here is Jill. Good morning. Good morning. I have some announcements and the life of our community. We have two book studies starting this month, one in person and one in Zoom. Reverend Karen Paulson is leading Stretching Our Faith, beginning with a study of Unbelievable by Episcopal Bishop John Selby Spong at 1 p.m. on Tuesdays in the Wesley Room. The Covenant class begins a study of Do I Stay Christian by Brian McLaren on Sundays at 6 p.m. over Zoom. It starts tonight, and Linda Grossman is the point person for this group. There are more details in your bulletin insert and in the weekly e-news. A new 10-week cycle of English Together tutoring begins this month. This program involves weekly one-on-one -on -one meetings over Zoom or in person with a Spanish-speaking worker who wants to improve their English. Attend an introductory orientation over Zoom on January 23rd, 24th, 30th, or 31st. Then meet with your learner over Zoom or in person for an hour each week for eight weeks. Contact Discipleship Chair Mike McCartney or Pastor Gerardo if you are interested. You do not need to speak Spanish to volunteer. Now please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. The God of all creation makes us one in the flesh. Let us join hearts and voices in grace. In Jesus Christ, we are made one in the spirit. Let us be united in truth through the same one spirit. We practice our faith in many different ways. Yet we confess one Lord Jesus Christ. We render different forms of ministry. Rejoice, people of God. The risen Christ is among us, calling us together at his one table. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord.
Will the children please uh, come forward? That's right, John, go up the steps, that's fine. Oh, here comes Bill. <laughs> oh, you're going to the choir. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hi, come on up. Why don't you sit right here with the kids? This morning, we are going to have a baptism. And uh, Maxim and Mila are going to be baptized. And uh, what, what is your name? Pardon? Can't hear you. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so have you been baptized? Do you know if you've been baptized? OK. Baptism is when we take, the minister takes some water and sprinkles on your head and says, I baptize you <clears throat> in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, which means God. And baptism is the way that we enter God's family. God loves you, of course. But, the sign, but baptism is the sign that you are not, God not only loves you, but wants you to be in his family. So when one is baptized, you become a member of God's family, the church family. You, you, you live with families in your home, but this is your church family. And they also love you. And if you ever have a problem, if you ever have need something, you go to any of them and they will, if you need a hug, you go to any of them in the church and you will be hugged, right? Right. They are your new family in God. So we are going to have a baptism. You uh, come over here, Maxim and Mila. And if you'd like to stand, or, or why don't you come out here and stand and you can watch. Come in. Would you come forward? You stand over here. Okay, all the kids, why don't you go stand right over there. You go over here. Right, right over there. Down, down there. Then you can watch. And Maxim, you stand right here. And you stand right there, okay. And where's Mila? Oh, come here, Mila. <laughs> I lost her. Yeah, you face me. Emily is our lay leader. Brothers and sisters. No, I'm sorry. In Christ, <clears throat> through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation. I give a new birth to water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. I present Maxim and Mila for baptism. Maxim and Mila, do you believe God made you? Say, I will, or I do. Do you believe Jesus loves you? Would you like to become a Christian and a member of the First United Methodist Church of Palo Alto? Say, I would. Okay. And, and Svetlana and Ozzy and Chad. Will you nurture Maximum and Mila in Christ's Holy Church that by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves? to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life. We will. Okay. Maxim, when you stand right here, would you take your cap off? Okay. This 
of the Mac, <clears throat> Maxim Hiroshi, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that you may be a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Mila, you can go back. Mila Misumi, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mila, the Holy Spirit work within you and you, that you will become a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may go back. <coughs> Congregation, Do you have a response when I get to that? <laughs> Members of the household. God Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, persevere, and keep you. I want to welcome you to your new church family. Can I show you some things that are in the back? Can I use yours? Okay. Oh, Pastor G. So in here we have a Bible for each of you. That's important. Very important. Your certificate of baptism that shows the date and that today you got baptized. And a special candle. This is something that you can take home and have in your home. And every January 22nd, you can light it to remember this day, to remember your baptism. We're so happy to have you with us. Yes, we are. You may leave the evening.
Please join me in prayer. O loving and merciful God, we gather as your people, humble to be called, willing to do what you would have us do. Bless the women of our church who are on a spiritual retreat this weekend. May they relax and rejoice in fellowship with you and one another. Thank you for blessing our church with children for baptism, with new and continuing study groups. Move among your people and encourage more to participate. For the suffering victims of the Ukraine war and California floods, we pray relief, comfort, and help in rebuilding. Oh Lord, another terrible shooting yesterday. Oh Lord, bring people to their senses. Lord, for those here or online who are having health issues or feel discouraged, depressed, unhappy. We pray for healing, joy, and confidence. May the fellowship of our church family uphold, strengthen, and encourage all of us. O oh God, hear us and answer us as we name in silence those who need a special blessing. May they sense your presence now as we whisper their names. We offer our prayers in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray saying, Our Creator who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is time to bring our tithes and offerings to God. You can donate to the ministries of this church with a check or cash in the offering plate by mailing a check to the church, using the Ministry One app on your phone, or clicking through the giving page on our church website. First United Methodist Church is grateful for all of your contributions. Now please join me in the offering prayer, after which the ushers will come forward. Holy God, as we present our tithes and offerings in worship, we know we come from a world that is tearing itself apart due to division. Even among your followers, we find ourselves shutting down and closing ourselves to those who don't think or act as we do. We need to be reminded that you desire unity and one mind from your children not a church void of disagreement, but one where work at listening and love more than working at speaking louder and winning the day. We dedicate not just our gifts, but our minds to the work of your unifying love. In Christ we pray, amen.
a liturgical dancer, is going to lead us in singing uh, with motions. The choir will do it first, and then the second time, please follow uh, Janet. Today is from the New English Translation, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. The Apostle Paul was writing to the church in Corinth. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to agree together, to end your divisions, and to be united by the same mind and purpose. For members of Chloe's household have made clear to me, my brothers and sisters, that there are quarrels among you. Now I mean this, that each of you is saying, I am with Paul, or I am with Apollos, or I am with Cephas, or I am with Christ. Is Christ divided? Paul wasn't crucified for you, was he? Or were you in fact baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Otherwise, I do not remember whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with clever speech, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. May God add blessings to this reading. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. Buenos dias. So, a strawberry milkshake. What does that have to do with the Bible of text? It may be the question that you are wondering about right now. But you cannot lie to me. The sermon title is catchy and got your attention. Perhaps because it is unexpected. Or perhaps simply because you are craving right now a rich, thick, and delicious milkshake. I assure you, I have a good reason to use in the strawberry milkshake analogy on this sermon. Last Wednesday, in our sermon study, we read the Bible passage in 1 Corinthians and realized that the biblical passage 
is not that far of a reality. The division between brothers and sisters within the community of faith is a reality, both in Paul's time and in our time. Problems, gossips, divisions within the faith community are a reality we constantly confront in the body of Christ. However, on Wednesday in the study, I invite people to reflect on the joyful moments within the community of faith, when they feel the most connected rather than thinking about the church problems that make us feel disconnected. So we have many anecdotes of that time when people felt connected with the church. But what was very interesting about that anecdotes and stories is that happened when it was a sense of unity in the church. When they have that great experience. Paul says in the books of Corinthians, of Corinthians I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but you be perfectly united in mind and thoughts. It is in unity of the church that God works his wonders and his miracles. Let me say that again. It is in the unity of the church that God works his wonders and his miracles. So I will share a little bit about my own experience. And one moment I feel so connected with the church. When I was ordained three years ago to uh, the Ministry of World Sacrament, it was in the pandemic time. It was the first ordination via Zoom in the Presbyterian Church in uh, San Francisco. So we have the ordination like a Zoom class. We have all the elders, all the pastors, and all the leaders who needed to be in ordination in order to, to be you know, official. And in house, the only person who were there was my, my family, my mother, my father, my siblings, and my two closest friends. And that's it. It was very meaningful. I will not lie to you. But it's not the same to be a church. You know, you have the congregation, they have all your brothers and sisters, you know, to lay hands on you and pray for you, you know, for the long and hard and difficult sometimes work as a minister. Three days later, when I was on my way to the hospital, I was a chaplain in Stanford Hospital. I had to, to start my, my shift at 8. I was on call that day. By my surprise, I have almost 15 people, brothers and sisters from my church, waiting for me outside the hospital. They have big notes saying, congratulations, Pastor Gerardo. Congratulations. They were all around. So it was meaningful. It was kind of sad because I cannot hug it. We cannot shake hands. We can, so I can have to say thank you. Thank you. But it was meaningful to see all my brothers and sisters at 7.30 in the morning waiting for me in the entrance of the hospital. That's unity. That's what makes sense in our lives to be in church, to be a, a community of faith that supports one another. So I will divide this sermon in two parts. One will be the unity and diversity of the milkshake. The most delicious moment for a strawberry shake is when it is finished, right? When one when we can taste the creamy texture of the milkshake combined with the flavors of strawberry. Before, we could not enjoy the milkshake because it was not in unity. 
the ingredients has to harmonize, to work together, to taste them and feel so good in a milkshake. It doesn't mean that the ingredients alone are not good. Strawberries are my favorite fruit. I love strawberry. In Spanish, we call fresa. I love fresas. But it's not the same when you combine the strawberries with the vanilla and the sugar and the cinnamon. The community of faith is good and pleasant when unity exists. And this was something that we did not agree just that Wednesday, only me. But David said on Psalm 133, once, say, uh, David said, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Now, someone maybe in this moment is thinking, we don't all like strawberry milkshakes, Pastor Jerry. The church is not just a strawberry milkshake, Pastor G. Jeez. You know what? I agree with you. Now, I will share a list of the best milkshake flavors I can find in the Internet. Let's see if some of these meet your fancy. Number one, apple pie puff milkshake. I know. There you go. Number two, chuck malt milkshake. Neapolitan milkshake. Now, if you want to get nuts, triple nuts caramel milkshake. For those who like parties, piña colada milkshakes. <laughs> Raspberry and white chocolate milkshake. Blueberry cheesecake milkshake. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, my personal favorite, PGS milkshake. Yes. Pastor Jerry Strawberry Milkshake. <laughs> Cold Purple Mine Milkshake. And, but, and last but not least, the Yummy Yummy Vanilla Special Milkshake. Friends, disagreement is not the problem. The problem is division. God likes diversity. I will ask you a question to all of you. And on three, I want you all to yell the answer, okay? On the entire milkshake list I just give you, what is the main ingredient? Ready? One, two, three. Milk. Milk. <laughs> right? Milk is the main ingredient on a meal shake. Brothers and sisters, God is the main ingredient on church. We all are just the items, the condiments that spice up the ministry. But we have to be united. There are Presbyterian shakes. There are Pentecostal shakes. Baptist shakes. And there are the Methodist shakes. What flavor is our church? What is the identity of the church? What is our community flavor? Now, it is the most challenging part to establish. Hence, the division among us. Some, someone should say, I am from the Balina team. Or maybe others will say, I'm from the chocolate team. Maybe other people will say, I'm from the PGS team, meaning Pastor Jerry's strawberry team. <laughs> but brothers and sisters, our, our identity as a ministry is what we offer to the community outside the church. If there is division between us, we are just milk with pieces of strawberry and vanilla floating around. And that's it. 
Now, in my exhaustive search for the mystery of the perfect milkshake, I discovered the secret. And I will share it with you. The secret to the ideal milkshake is the blend of all the ingredients until a smooth consistency. In other words, the secret of a good milkshake is blending into perfection. Paul asks us to agree, to blend, and not let the spirit of division separate us. Number two, the good news of the milkshake. Let me ask you a question. What if I told you, my brothers and sisters, that after the service, we are going to enjoy some milkshakes in the patio? Would that be a good news? Amen. Who say amen? There you go. In the same way, Paul instructs us to bring good news of Christ to the community. The madness of the good news of the milkshake, the madness of the good news of the gospel is part of being a church that preach and reflects the message of the cross. The church of Christ who loves the community around it and serve it. Just like we just dance with our sister, we have to melt, perform, go to the community to serve. Jesus called us in Matthew 5, 13, to be the salt of the earth. Brothers and sisters, continue with the same allegory of the food. I want you to be the salt, the sugar, the strawberry, the chocolate, the berries, the piña colada, the vanilla of the earth, which give flavor to our church. But we have to work in unity, in harmony. We need to blend our gifts or talents, and the fruits of the Holy Spirit, putting aside our biases and differences. In conclusion, you have your blender, you put some strawberries, let's put some milk, sugar, I like cinnamon, so a little piece of cinnamon, then you turn the blender. Everything goes into the blender. And we get a delicious strawberry smoothie. Very yummy. That was, a, that was one of the children's moments I had long ago. And I was teaching them that God likes when the fake community works in unity and harmony. Paul exhorts us to maintain unity in our church, so that we can bring the message of the cross, the message of salvation through Jesus to our community. Paul exhorts us to put our divisions aside and work in harmony with one another under the authority of one name and one name alone, the name of Jesus. This sermon used theological themes like ecclesiology, which is the doctrine of the church, soteriology, with the doctrine of salvation, pneumatology, which is the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. They have theological terms such as love, unity, beloved community. But as you notice, I did not identify any of these theological topics with their proper name. As Paul says in verse 17, it is not with eloquent words or with theological seminary jargon that we share the love of Jesus and the good news of salvation, but with simple words that we all understand 
We preach the gospel of God with simple and beautiful words of life that resonate in our lives. But above all, words of life that we'll remember forever, just like a strawberry milkshake. Amen. Check for you after the service. <laughs> I will now invite my brothers and sisters. If you have a petition you need uh, that we pray for you, if you have a difficult moment, or you're sick, or somebody in your family or friends are sick, or you're celebrating a birthday or something special. This is the moment to come before God and pray. So we invite you to come in the front so we can pray for you. Pastor Doug and I will be praying for you. And we will invite the rest of the congregation, if, they, if you cannot come, just to raise your hand and pray for the people.
and sisters, now go and be that milkshake that the community and the world need, bringing the love, the joy of Jesus Christ. Go in peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.